talk. So welcome. This is about how to stay off the layoff list. I'm Ethan Evans. I'm a retired VP from Amazon. And now I coach and teach to help other people uh, succeed in their careers. So this is my quick bio. The parts that are most interesting, feel free to read all of it. And the QR code will give you all the links of where to find me. But um, the interesting parts for today are in the in red. So I won't cover my whole bio. I'll just say I myself was laid off twice. One of those was extremely personal. I was at a small startup and I was a one person layoff because a startup can legally do that. So you can call that laid off or fired. You know, we're, we're laying off one person today and it's you. But I've done a 30% layoff of a team. So a lot of people I've done, uh, um, I've also been part of letting a whole organization go both in the startup sense and later at Amazon where we shut down a function. So I have experience on both sides of the layoff uh, process, and hopefully that will that will equip me to talk well about it. Let's move on, because this is a lightning lesson, so I'm going to move like lightning. So today we have three things to cover. We're going to cover how the lists are made, how you can stay off them, which is really the second part, how to be seen as essential. And then what to do if you are laid off. So be prepared to learn and adjust. And I have a slide or two on each topic. So the first thing to understand is layoff lists are made in many different ways. Sometimes in organization, just like me, they're shutting down a whole function. So the whole team is on the list because the thing that's being done isn't going to be around anymore. The thing to understand there, though, and I know this because I just saw it in a layoff, is the management will still go in and they'll say, okay, every, every person in this organization needs to find a new job. But these people are going to be given, um, these people are going to be given uh internal opportunities. And these people are only going to be given an offer to leave. So management in the background um, will still help. Uh, by the way, for, for the folks doing admin, we have a lot of people piling up in the waiting room. So there we go. Sweet. Sorry to call your attention to it. Anyway, um, so just be aware that even though the list is made one way, how the people on the list is treated can be different. So in that case, you wanna try and be the person who's being treated differently, even if no one acknowledges that, because there's this separate process that goes on, which is how do we find homes for the people we wanna keep? And how do we not advertise that we're doing that with the people we don't wanna keep? Um, so, the second way layoff lists are made, and I've seen this done a lot recently, is by seniority or tenure. Everyone who's been here less than 12 months is going. Everyone who's been here less than 24 months is going. The reason companies do this is it's very legally defensible. Tenure is a doesn't get questioned because it doesn't look like bias towards any particular group. It looks like, oh, we had a clear criteria, and the criteria was how many years have you worked here um, or how many months. Often layoffs are by function. So for example, if a company stops growing, often the first group to get a big layoff is the recruiting team. Because if you're not growing at the moment you're shrinking, you need a lot fewer recruiters. So if you look around the market today, you'll find a lot of people who were in recruiting, particularly at big tech, are now out of jobs. The last way, and this is the most sensitive, is by performance. And I put the word perceived in there because somebody always gets upset at me and says, how dare you say I was laid off because I'm a bad performer? Well, performance is a factor. It's up to you to figure out if there's something real to how your performance was perceived or if it was simply perception. I will caution you at saying it's only perception. In my two cases, I was laid off and part of it was my real performance and I had to come to terms with that. You may not have to do that. But these are the general ways lists are made. Um, now, next point. Managers are often not consulted. There are a few reasons for this. Number one, there's a big fear of leaks. We don't want anybody to know there's a layoff coming until we're going to spring it on them. The reason for that is you don't want a lot of fear and panic, and you don't want the people that you wish to keep 
leaving because they think they might lose their job. The side effect of this, though, is your manager may not be consulted in the layoff preparation because, A, the manager themselves may be getting laid off, or B, they just feel there's too many managers and the VPs or someone have to make the decisions to keep the, the secret. What that means is if you want to be kept, you better have a relation or at least awareness of who you are higher up the food chain. Because I've definitely seen the situation where a VP is putting people's names on a list and because they have a huge organization, they're putting names on a list and they're like, I don't know this person or that person. How do I pick between them? Well, if they know someone, they're more likely, even though it's a subconscious bias, to keep the person they know and get rid of the name that's just a name. Why? It feels really hard to fire somebody you know or lay off somebody you know, and it feels really easy to put a name on a list. So if you want to stay off the list, know your skip level and your skip skip level. So here are the ways to stay off the list. Well, be or at least be seen as high performing. It's important not only to be high performing, but to be seen that way because it makes perfect sense that if a company has a choice between letting go of people that they think are high performing and letting go of people they think are not, who would you pick, right? If you, if you had to cut your team from six to three and you had three people you thought were high performing and three people that you thought were okay or not so good, who would you let go of? This is not, there's nothing illogical about this, even though some people get upset. The second way to stay on the list though, is have a rare or essential skill. I was just coaching someone in the last hour, one of my coaching clients. He has a member of his team who's the only person who knows a particular technology. Well, even if he thinks that person is low performing, doesn't like him, does, wishes ill on him. In a layoff, you still keep that person who has developed the rare skill because they're the only one. So that's the second way to stay off the list kind of no matter what, as long as the whole team isn't being shut down. The third and fourth points here are related. When, why do companies ever do a layoff? It's because they don't have enough money to keep funding all their ambitions. They think that the project or the people that they can't afford to pay for all of it. And it's not, so they go and trim the things they think are least valuable. Well, so if you don't want to be trimmed, you have to be on the things they see as the most valuable. So get close to the money, get close to what's making money, get close to what's earning money, get close to the projects that are for customers that are part of contracts. You want to get away from unprofitable or pre-launch teams because when push comes to shove it's the things that are making the money that will be kept similarly startups are more dangerous it's not that you want to have huge layoffs in big tech or elsewhere we've seen that but here's the difference if a company is a successful business making money today they have the option to use some of that money to fund some things that are not yet running not yet making money, but that they believe in. Startups, by definition, usually only have one product and one business. So if that product or business is not producing enough money to sustain, they have no other place to get money. Whereas an Amazon, a Google, a Meta, an Apple, Apple with the war chest it builds off the iPhone alone can fund all kinds of things for years, upturn, downturn, it's only a question of what they believe in doing. It's not a question of do they have the money. For startups, it's a question of do they have the money, which is what can make them higher risk. They simply don't have other choices. Okay, <clears throat> now let's talk about being essential. So here are the rest of your quick tools for high performance. First, ask for feedback early. If you're not sure where you stand with your manager, you can either find out when your name is a surprise to you on the layoff list, or you can find out uh, by asking. And then to the degree you can, address any of those gaps now. Remember, you don't have to be the best person or your manager's favorite person. You just have to be high enough up not to be on the list. So understanding what is your what is the person or the people who are going to be evaluating whether or not you stay or go? What do they think of you? Better to find that out before they're making a list. 
Second, volunteer for assignments that have short-term payoff. This is again, a part of getting close to the money. If you're not on something that makes money now, go find a way to get closer to it. I already mentioned rare skill or knowledge, so learn one. Now, since we're hosted on Maven, I thought I'd throw them a plug here. Obviously, Maven teaches things. You can learn more about AI. You can learn more about all kinds of things. Doesn't matter where you learn it, learn something that makes you unique on the team. Finally, I do want to acknowledge very clearly the point of this class was how to stay off the layoff list. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes a whole division is shut down or a whole startup closes. In that case, there's nothing you can do. I've given you all the tools to shift your odds. Sometimes it's still going to happen. Happened to me. So let's talk about that. If you do get laid off, it will generally be something of a surprise to you. You may know that it's probably coming. Depending on the law in the country where you are, it may have been announced that there will be reductions. But one day you'll get an email or a call to a meeting and someone will sit down and say, I'm sorry, this is, you know, we're going to be letting you go. Arguing isn't going to work here. Some people want to argue. Why me? Why not Ethan? Why me? Why our team? Why, why, why? If you need to ask those questions, I guess you go ahead, but don't expect useful answers and don't expect it to change anything. I literally do not know of, maybe someone in chat will show me how I'm wrong because there's 260 people here, but I do not know of anyone ever anywhere who has ever talked themselves out of a layoff. Once it gets to you're in the room, I've never seen that happen or heard of it. Um, so instead, Focus on clarity. I'll go back to this request to break point in a minute. Focus on clarity. Understand what's happening. What is the timeline? What services are being offered to you? What severance is being offered? What is the outplacement? What is the process? Are there opportunities to apply for other open internal jobs? And then ask for more. There's no downside. They're already firing you. Sorry, laying you off. You're already losing your job. So you have nothing to lose in asking for more severance, extended health care, um, more help in outplacement, support in finding internal jobs. The better, by the way, the people doing the layoffs don't feel good about it. No one wakes up, no, no manager, no one in my situation or any other leader situation wakes up and says, you know what I'd like to go do today? I'd like to sit down with one person after another and tell them that I'm taking away their job. Like, so I'm not asking for sympathy. The point is you can use that to your advantage. Um, the, and I see someone said Bob and Bob from Office Space enjoyed it. That was Lane. Yes, in a movie, there are people who enjoy it. You're right. Uh, but no one else does. So those people feel guilty and bad. And if you can give them a compelling reason for why they should fight to give you more severance or give you more support. They want to, because they, they want to feel like, oh, we did the best we could for people. So it doesn't hurt to tell, I don't encourage lying, but to tell any true story about your life that generates empathy. I just moved for this job. I don't have connections here. I have sick parents. I have uh, three kids, you know, doesn't matter. Now, some people say, oh, why, why are you bringing emotions into this, Ethan? Shouldn't it all be antiseptic? And isn't that unprofessional? The whole thing sucks. There's nothing wrong with using your leverage and saying, look, I'm in a rough situation. I'm a single mom. I'm a single father. I'm a single parent. I'm, you know, I just moved. I just bought a new house. Anything that's true in your life that demands money, throw it on the table. Not all of them, but pick the most emotionally compelling to get more money in this situation for your life. And uh, you may or may not get more money, but I can tell you, if you give them a reason, most people want to feel like they did right. And they don't want to feel like, oh, Ethan just moved to this town and he's got three kids and, and you know, he's a single father and now he's out of a job. We got to do something. And I've seen this work lots of times. Finally, don't sign anything that day. Uh, at least in the US, I know there's a lot of people here from all over the world, but Unless you're in a situation where they truly can take it away, 
most companies will give you time to go think it over. If you are too overwhelmed, shocked, or saddened by the news that you're being let go, ask a break. Say, this is really hard for me. As you can see, I'm very emotional. Can I take an hour? Can I come back tomorrow to go through this after I've had time to process it? All right. So I think um, we're, at the, we're at the last slide, then we'll go to Q&A. Um, learn and adjust. So once this has happened to you, try to honestly assess why me. Now, why me may be, well, our whole team was shut down. But if your whole team wasn't shut down, you want to look a little and really ask again, why, why if some people stayed and you didn't, why was that? Because it, it may be that there's nothing for you to change or make better. But someone picked you and they had a reason in their head. It's worth trying to figure out what that reason was because if it's something that maybe you want to change in your next job, it's worth looking at that. And I can tell you, I made changes that enabled me to get where I ended up as a vice president at Amazon based on this question. And yes, it sucked. I had to look at myself and say, okay, you have these traits that you enjoy being that person, but other people don't enjoy you being that person, you'd better change. And I did. Some other stuff. Update your resume and LinkedIn now. This is stuff you can do, why not? It, you should always have it ready. Be building your network. Your network is your strongest tool if you're laid off. If a whole bunch of you are laid off together, team up with others to find work. As an example, check out this guy on LinkedIn. Maybe, Jason, you can put a link to him in the chat. Amir Satvat, S-A-T-V-A-T. -A -A he, by the way, didn't get laid off himself, but he felt bad for people in the gaming community who were getting laid off. He's built an enormous community, a self-help community in gaming around finding people jobs. And his community has helped a thousand laid off gamers, game developers, find jobs. You can find those networks and team up to share leads because a lead you hear about may not be right for you, but may be right for someone else. The last thing I would leave you with, obviously you wanna have cash on hand if you can, is you can succeed despite being laid off. I've told you very honestly, I was laid off twice. And by the way, it was two jobs in a row. So I had two setbacks in a row. One was economic. The second one was economic plus me being kind of a jerk, which is what I had to look at. But from being laid off twice, I rebounded to have the career I've had and to be here teaching today from a position of luxury. So if this happens to you, realize it sucks terribly, but it's not death. You can come back from it. So we will now, thank you for putting Amir's link in, uh, in chat. He's a beast, as someone said. It's a good example. Um, I, of course, teach a leadership course. That's what brings me to Maven a lot. If you're interested, this is my next cohort. It's in two weeks. I specialize, if you don't know me, in getting leaders to the next level. That's what I do. And that's why I end up talking about layoffs because leaders have to do layoffs oftentimes as a part of their side of the table in the job. So the course is super well rated. We're offering a discount for the first time ever. We've never discounted this course. So if that's your world and you're interested in it, this code 10X Career with Ethan is good for 72 hours. It's the only time we've ever discounted the course as an experiment. And now this is where you can find me I'm going to leave this up for 10 or 15 seconds. Jason is going to come on screen and we're going to jump into Q&A by most upvotes. Um, so I'll take that off the screen. I'm going to stop the sharing so you can see me. If you want to find me, though, you can use that QR code or find me on LinkedIn. So with right. that, Jason, let's do it. We have a lot of questions. Let's go through it lightning fast. The first All one, right. Ethan, is... Uh, what are the signs that you're on the layoff list? Um, the I guess one sign is uh, 
people start asking you what you're working on in a way that like they sort of seem to be transferring it. So if they start asking like, so what are you working on? Where's this project? Where's that project more than usual? Then they're probably trying to figure out a way like what do we need to know about how to live in a post Ethan world? The second way is your manager may start hiding from you. Um, in other words, they don't want to talk. They they postpone your one on one. That's because they don't want to face you and have you maybe ask like, "Am I on the layoff list?" They don't they don't want to have to tell you. Managers hope to get through this process without lying to you. And if you ask them, "Am I about to be laid off?" They need to lie because they're under a gag order. They can't reveal the layoff, so they have to say. No, there's no layoff coming, even though they know there is, because they can't say, yes, the layoff's tomorrow, right? They can't do that. So that's why. Those are a couple signs. Other people, by the way, if in chat you have a different answer to these questions, help help your friends out. So feel free to roll in the chat with other things. Next question. Question two, can you get laid off because of high compensation? Sure, absolutely. Um, I, I don't know the law behind it, Exactly. But remember why I want to lay you off and why I can legally justify it are, are usually separate things. And I'm sure, remember, all layoff law varies by country. I know the U.S. best. I know Europe and India slightly. They're all slightly different. But yes, sometimes a goal is how do we get rid of this overpaid person? How do we get, because there is a question of we're, why are you doing a layoff? The company doesn't have the money or doesn't think the team in question is worth the investment it's costing. So you absolutely have a question of, can we get rid of this high compensation person and keep two lower compensated people? Is that a better deal? And so having extremely high comp compensation can make you at risk. That is true. Next. Next question. Uh, what are strategies to find out if you're perceived as high performing? And do you recommend asking your skip level about your performance? Yes, uh, I will give strategies. Yes, I, I envision absolutely ask your skip level. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. So the easiest way to know if you're considered high performing is, A, what was your last review? What did it say? B, how does your manager treat you? Do they treat you as essential? Do they invest in you? Are you getting training opportunities? Are, are you getting choice assignments? Are you at least getting approval and positive feedback? Um, C, go ask them. Go ask, hey, I, I want to be a star on this team. How am I doing? Is there anything I need to improve? And then for the skip level, you say the same thing, only slightly differently. With your skip, someone like me, you come and say, hey, um, I'm a part of this team. I know I don't have a lot of time with you. I wanted to make sure I'm making an impact for the organization. Uh, are you familiar with my work? If not, let me give you a quick summary of it. See what they say. Um, is there anything you'd like to see better or different uh, about me personally? And also, what problems are you worried about? Because managers always have a whole list of problems in their head that they want help with. And by the way, they're very rarely asked. So um, I think that's a complete answer. Next, Jason. All right, next question. Uh, you mentioned recruiting before, but are there other specific teams or roles that are more likely to be to be impacted? Sure. Another another classic one is sales. Um, Salesforce can be very expensive, and if a product isn't selling or a company doesn't have um, enough sales, generally they invested in sales to try and grow their revenue, and the revenue is not there. So what they do is they cut the low performing salespeople. And they give all their accounts to the higher performing salespeople and try to have those salespeople keep those alive through the downturn or through the rough period. So sales can be very vulnerable. In a non-tech company, anything that looks like classically what was called R&D, research and development, is vulnerable. The reason is in a tech company, uh, there's a high value placed on engineering talent, but in a bank, in an insurance company, in uh, a consumer company, engineers look like very expensive headcount. So for example, I coach someone, uh, I won't be too specific, but I coach someone who was chief technical officer at a, at a mid-size investment firm. She, they basically look at her team and, and it, I, I think it already has been laid off, but they look at her team 
And they're, they're like, hey, these are very expensive people that aren't directly part of making investments. Instead, they're building software. And so they target, uh, her team was disproportionately hit by layoffs. So if you're in tech at, at a company that's not really a tech company, you're vulnerable because you look expensive, your payroll is high, and you don't look like you're essential to the day-to-day -day business. The idea being, well, we'll throw all this R&D out, we'll lay those people off and we can rehire them in two years and so what? Now, as a tech person, that offends me, but business people think that's true all the time. Go ahead. Got it, next question. Uh, you're already on the layoff list. How do you get out of it quickly? Um, if the if the list has been announced, you get out of it quickly by either finding a different internal job or starting your external job hunt. If you simply think that's true, but the shoe hasn't dropped, um, you would have to figure out who they're keeping or why and try and convince your manager or management to make an adjustment. There is some chance of getting something adjusted up to the last minute. Every layoff list I've ever seen or been a part of has been fluid until it was delivered. Like they were still making or confirming final decisions the night before or the morning of. The way off it is to convince someone that you have more value, that you're essential in some way. Uh, that said, of course, it's better to stay off of it, um, but I'm giving the best advice I can, uh, you know. Okay. All right, next question. Uh, any other tactics to stay layoff proof? So again, layoff proof is nearly impossible. I guess, okay, there is one tactic to stay layoff proof. Be the CEO and keep enough money in the bank to pay yourself. Like, no, seriously, that is that is the one. By the way, even though I, I saw startups do lots of layoffs and help startups do layoffs, the CEO always survived, right? The CEO is the last person to go in most cases. So even though I was an executive, I went. But the CEO was the founder. They go last, right? They 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 open and shut the door. So um, that is one way. The second way, again, is to have this skill or knowledge that no one else has. And I'm not encouraging you to be that person who hoards knowledge. Instead, I'm encouraging you to be that person that's always on the cutting edge, developing the new important thing and being the best at it. Uh, but, you know, you can think of it this way. If the CEO had to fire everyone but one person, what skill would they value most? Have that skill and you'll be last to go. So that's how you stay off the layoff list is you be so valuable to the core survival business that's making money today that they can't imagine conducting that business without you. Now, if you look at a place like Amazon, as an example, just because I know Amazon best, the last people to go would be the people in the warehouse. Right. And the people who run the data centers, because you can actually short term get rid of everything else in Amazon except the data centers, the warehouses, and the people who keep the website minimally running. You could theoretically get rid of, like, you know, almost every other project if you kept those. So, and you, you can do the same exercise for Google. If, you only need the people who sell the ads, run the ads, and keep the search engine up. Everything else can go, and Google survives. Okay. Um, Are there any other yeah. specific rare skills uh, in this environment that you would suggest? Can you define rare skills? That, that's a great yeah. question. Specific rare skills. Rare means rare on your team. It can be the most common skill in the world. But if your team needs it and you're the only one on the team, it's only local rarity that matters. So, for example, um, if you're the only person who knows how to do the end of month report or if you're the only person who knows a particular computer language that part of the team still depends on, even though they've all migrated. So um, I come from tech, so I tend to give tech examples. If you're the only person who can balance the books, if you're the only person who has a relationship with the key client, like you're the sales contact on the biggest client, they're gonna keep you preferentially. If you're the only person uh, in a foreign country where that country is essential to the business, or you're the only one, you know, 
Um, your company works a lot with, you know, for example, Japan or China, and you're the person who speaks Japanese or Chinese. It doesn't have to be necessarily a tech skill. It has to be unique to what that company needs. Next question. Ethan, we are over time, but are you okay going uh, with four to five more questions? Sure. Well, okay. they're going quick, so we'll do a few more. And then I want to thank everybody who came, obviously. I hope to see those of you it's relevant for in my class. Um, I hope you all follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, some of you probably came from there. Uh, but yeah, let's answer a few more. And everyone, regarding the discount code, you will get it in the email afterwards sent by Maven. So stay tuned for that. Okay, next question. Uh, middle managers. How do they survive in the current environment with flattening org structures and more emphasis on IC roles? <laughs> um, that's tough, right? Uh, but middle managers aren't going away, okay? Teams, uh, some middle managers may go away. Um, the way to survive is honestly a lot of relationship upwards as well as performance okay i don't want to say it's all just people when i say relationship everyone hears oh so kiss up no but be likable be easy to work with be pay attention to the people above you and what they prefer and don't prefer and their preferred work styles by the way i'm not meaning they like to golf although that can work too i have seen people kept for all kinds of reasons and 100% being golf buddies with the CEO is the type thing that can work or whatever with the director, et cetera. That said, middle managers get kept if they're delivering an impact. Managers are there to deliver an impact for the business. So are you running projects that make money? Are you driving things quickly? Can you basically show or convince people that your leadership is responsible for valuable innovation or valuable execution. If you can, they're gonna keep you. If not, they're gonna be like, yeah, that guy just sort of shuffles papers. Don't need him. Okay, let's go. Uh, how far in advance is the list made? Weeks, months? Fun question. Um, normally, only weeks. If it was, If it's being made months in advance, it's either because legal requirements, um, some companies require that you give a lot of notice. Um, uh, and so in that case, you get this weird situation where you know you're going to be laid off, but you have three months of employment guarantee or something. This is common more in the European Union countries, for example. Um, but while that list was technically made months in advance of you packing your box and leaving, it wasn't necessarily made months in advance of you being told. These things are, they're also sometimes done very cruelly where people start working on it, but they know like, well, we need everyone through fourth quarter or we need everyone until version X ships. So I've absolutely seen the situation of, we know we're gonna lay off these 15 people or this, mostly these 15 people, but we're keeping it secret until they finish this piece of work and then we're going to let them go the next day. Uh, in that case though, they usually know they're gonna do a layoff and they still only make the list a couple weeks in advance. And the reason for this is managers are always hoping to avoid a layoff. If it's months in advance, they are hoping to find a way to increase their results or that the economy will turn around. So layoffs are normally a short-term process. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, follow up to this. Is there a way to know or get a sense of when the list is being made? Yeah, I think I kind of covered that earlier when I said managers stop talking hmm. to you. Um, they defer one-on-ones. There's a lot of unexplained meetings or gatherings of the leadership, possibly offsite. Now, it doesn't mean that every offsite means a layoff, okay? It doesn't. But um, when when managers and leaders seem to start avoiding their teams, that's usually a sign that they're trying to avoid uh, looking people in the eye. And that's not because they're bad people. It's because it sucks to walk up to somebody's desk and chat with them about what they're doing and their kids and know that you're putting them on a list to ruin all of that in two weeks. So people spare themselves that pain, right? It's just, 
it's not that they're jerks, it's that they're human. Um, and I know it's easy to think that every manager who ever did a layoff is a jerk, but that isn't true. Okay. Okay, we'll do three more questions. Uh, here's a quick one. Ethan, how do you personally define high performing? Impact. Impact. Are, what are you doing that's making a difference to the bottom line of the business, the efficacy of the team? I don't care that you're busy. I care that it's having a result. Second, proactive. Are you coming to me and looking for good things to do or finding things to do on your own? Or do I have to come tell you everything? So proactive people making impact will always be kept. And the person who uh, it may be busy shuffling papers or, or you know, uh, they look busy, but there's nothing resulting from it or that I have to hunt down anytime I want something done. Won't be. Next. Next one. Uh, how do you best explain a career break due to layoffs to future hiring managers and recruiters? Absolutely. Great question. I've had to do this. A um, uh, couple of things. First, you don't need to bring it up, but when it's brought up, you better have a quick answer that's well put together. So practice it first. Um, second, you don't, you should not lie, but um, how you explain it depends on the circumstances. So for example, right now there are lots of layoffs and it's fine to simply say, I was part of the downsizing at company X if it's well known and that company is large, uh, that there was a downsizing because it's no shame at this point. Um, you know, I was let go from Google. I, I understand Rivian, for example, just did a big layoff. When 30% of a company, which I think is what happened at Rivian is let go, you can say I was part of the Rivian downsizing. Um, and that's not going to work against you. If you work at a small company or you were laid off in an unusual layoff during otherwise good times, then people have more suspicion, whether it's fair or not, they have more suspicion that your layoff is a reflection on you and you were considered a low performer. In that case, what you want to do is explain, A, is there any clear reason you were laid off? It was done by tenure and unfortunately I had just joined. Or you just pivot and you say, oh yeah, it is true I was let go from Acme Inc. or there was a layoff. But really I consider it a blessing because I wanted to focus on X, Y, Z and now I have the chance to do that. Like it was, uh, I was due for a move. And so while it's unfortunate how it happened, the point here is you immediately pivot to the positive. While it's unfortunate how it happened, it's driven me to look at what I really want to do. And what I've discovered is your company is a great match for me. And you pivoted to talking about how you want to do the thing the company does. What you never, never, never do is say, oh, yeah, what a disaster that company was. Acme Inc. is the worst run company. And I can't believe what they did. And those Nobody wants that person on their team because you're badmouthing the company and they're afraid that's who you are, a person who badmouths and they don't want that. So acknowledge it in as few words as you can, truthful words, and then pivot. Next. All right, Ivan, I'm going to ask two last questions. Uh, this one, some people are asking this question about tenure and if being longer tenured is a, is a threat to being laid off. So who's more, who's more at risk, long or short? Uh, Usually, at least in the layoffs I'm aware of, tenure is considered a sign of loyalty and value as well as institutional knowledge. So when tenure is used, it's usually used to get rid of the new people. But it, are there circumstances? Now, tenure also definitely means you're older. It doesn't mean you're old, but it means you're older. So it's illegal, okay, at least in the United States. But there can be, um, people can look at and say, well, you know, do we, do we need new blood in here? Do we need people with fresher skills? Do we need people with higher energy? And in that sense, where tenure correlates with a perception of being rigid or inflexible or no longer dedicated or burnt out or not a fast learner, there can be a correlation. But I'm actually not aware of anywhere we also talked about high compensation being a factor, but broadly being longer in time tends to mean you get kept. 
you should have a deeper web of knowledge, a deeper web of relationships, a longer track record of productivity. If you don't have those, okay, if you've never moved up, a decision people can make that, again, is not exactly tenure related, but is due to your tenure is, wow, Ethan's kind of the same performer he was 10 years ago. He's not getting any better. Yeah, Jason's only been here two years and actually isn't as good, but Ethan's trajectory is like this and Jason's is like that. Jason's going to be the star of the future. So you can think of it a little bit like in sports where teams sometimes move on their late career players because they see like the, the younger player has more future. That said, I wouldn't overly worry about this. It's not a common factor. All right, last question. Let's assume it's a good one. Go. Okay, this is a this is a hot topic. You are a high performer. You're put on a new initiative, great growth and visibility opportunities, but can also be a place to cut if it's not launched well or there's low growth to begin with. Where's the balance right now? Balance is a great word. What's the balance in your checking account? If the balance in your checking account is good, stay on the high growth project. If the balance in your checking account is negative, get off of it because it's a gamble. But if you're in a position where you can accept the risk of that gamble going wrong, take the risk because of the upside. If you're in a situation where you know, you're know you the sole earner for your household and you have no savings and big college debt or whatever your personal circumstances are, or say you're on a visa. In the US is a common problem where you're on a visa where if you lose your job, you're gonna be deported if you can't get another, go somewhere safer, go, go somewhere near the money that's stable. If you have the option to take the risk, take the risk because ultimately a great career is only made through risk. There is no like perfectly safe way to have a high growth, high end point career, right? Take all the founders of the big tech companies who are the billionaires verging on, well, not verging yet, but headed towards trillionaires. They all took the risk of starting their own companies most entrepreneurial ventures fail. And I'm not saying you have to be an entrepreneur, but the highest flying takes the most risk and that's a gamble. So are you in a position to take that gamble? If you're not, go somewhere safe, save your pennies, get in that position and then take the risk. And with that, we need to sign off as a 30 minute lightning lesson that's gone 45 minutes. It's been super fun. Thank you all for being here. I hope it's been a, a help to you. And uh, I know there's many questions we didn't get to, but we got to as many as we could. So with that, cheers, have a great day, and good luck.